This old coach house needs windows, but before I can go knocking out the ugly breeze blocks, I need to do some fettling, mortar repairs. So I've been busy mixing up different aggregates with lime, trying to find a mix that matches the original mortar. I'm not going to knock out all the old mortar because my bricks are sensitive little souls. They've been there for over a hundred years, undisrupted, and if I start raking all the old stuff out with an angle grinder, with a chisel, it's going to really upset them. Most of the failed mortar is down to poor maintenance, leaking gutters, leaking roof, and it's exposed it to the elements more than it needs to have done. That's why I'm left trying to match the original mortar. <laughs> no, 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 no. No cement. I'm going to be using lime mortar. I'm not going to be using an NHL lime either. In the past, I have actually used an NHL lime mortar. I sent off a sample to a reputable company for their analysis. After they analysed it, they sent me a pre-mixed match of my mortar. But after installing it, I found it looked nothing like the sample that I sent. And that got me into looking into NHL mortars. And studies show that it's no good to be used above ground level. The porosity is nothing like a hot mix lime mortar and after compressive strength tests they found that it sets far too hard, even the so-called weaker NHL2s. So that means it can damage masonry in a similar way to sand and cement. It sets in an almost glass-like way. Many people have been using NHL limes in good faith, not realising the detrimental impact it's having on the masonry around it. Yeah. Hot mix lime mortar, that's what I'm going to use. The original glue that would have bonded all of these bricks together was a hot mix lime mortar. The hot mix from lime mortar is also very noble. Because it's soft, it sacrifices itself to save the masonry. And it's also self-healing too. This hot mix mortar is a combination of aggregates and quicklime. Essentially, it's sand and burnt rock mixed together. To match my mortar, I'm going to be mixing up a few things together in different ratios. Nosterfield sand, which is a wash river sand, similar to a sharp sand. Gilting sand, which is a yellow sand from the Cotswolds, which I'm using for its colour. Brick dust, which is just crushed up bricks, which is a very mild pozzolan. Again, I'm using it for its colour. And then clinker, which is a byproduct from the coal industry, which is being used to mimic the burnt bits from the original mortar, which I guess is from the lime kills, maybe a bit of a contaminant that snuck in there. And then kibbled quicklime, the magic white stuff, which is binding everything together. I think quicklime and lime in general are absolutely fascinating. They seem to have a myriad of different uses and almost contain superpowers. Self-healing, storing energy like they do and they're antiseptic. It, the list goes on and on. I've actually had a go at making some quick lime. I got a chunk of limestone, heated it up for ages with my gas axe, and once the calcination had finished, I was left with quick lime. And quick lime is bonkers stuff. It's basically a highly charged caustic battery that releases its load as soon as it's exposed to water. Once it's finished being hot and bothered, you're left with hydrated lime. And if it's mixed with aggregates, that's mortar. The beautiful thing about limestone is it, there's a cycle, there's a lime cycle. It starts off as calcium carbonate, and then when you heat it up like I have done with the gas axe, it turns into calcium oxide, which is loads of energy bundled up, ready to be released. When you add water to it, and that slakes it, it turns into calcium hydroxide because it's been hydrated by the water and then slowly it absorbs all the carbon and turns back into calcium carbonate, which is marvellous, I think. And it means that it can be used again and again and again. It also means that it's a rock, a naturally occurring rock that you can reform and mould into different ways. It kind of makes sense why there's still lime mortar from the Egyptian and Roman times kicking around. So all of the lime mortar that's currently in here and in good fettle and the lime mortar that I put in 
There's no reason why it won't outlive me and all of us if it's looked after. Yeah, I've got my bucket of mortar samples down there and then I'm just going to get it matched up to this because I've got this crack to fix and I may, be, may as well just repair some of this damaged stuff um, and I want to obviously match it up properly there's quite a bit of damage really um, that just needs sorting out I'm guessing it's been a leaking gutter same same up there and it's uh, taken its toll and this brick's actually dropped down from the looks of things as well so it's just a case of <laughs> they all look very very similar to be honest very similar so Okay, so just getting these shown up and seeing what looks what looks right. So that is number two. That one I don't think either. Doesn't look far off, does it? And I don't think that I'm gonna get it much that much closer. Some places it looks okay, but then other places not as much, but I think I think two will ding dang do. <laughs> I mean, you could drive yourself crackers doing this. <laughs> One quick one. Half yellow sun, half brick dust. Bear with me here, but if you think about it, maybe the reason why the cement mix are evolving is so mesmerising is because it's it's the opposite of us. We've got a start and an end, we're born and we die. But the cement mixer keeps on revolving. It's an analogy of the universe. The seasons come and go and they keep doing that in a cycle. We're spinning around the sun, the moon spinning around the sun. not enjoying this it's just everything's so fragile I need to knock the mortar out and it's just not great so all of that is raked out and I've given it the absolute drenching of its life I've not wanted to take any of this out because it's it's in pretty nicely and I don't want to upset everything even more than I have done. It's not been very enjoyable to do. So, got my hot muck, gobbo, whatever it's called. And um, yeah, I'm ready to put things back together again. And you can see it's all just, well, some of it's a little bit, hmm. And that bit, I think if I took that apart, I'd have to rebuild the whole lot, which I don't really want to do that because I won't be able to put it back together as well as it's been done and well, it looks fine so I just raked out the parts after rake out that side we've got a cat and on that side house martins which have just come back recently looking better just need to get those bricks in
I'm back up on the ladders again. So, I'm just gonna show you what's going on. Well, I've left everything proud. I know it's just, it's gone hard enough for me to get the churn brush onto it, and get it all tamped off. And it's kind of, I've put it on too proud because it's like a protective layer on the top there. So when I tap it off, it goes. It seems like the top layer almost works as a sacrificial part. That does all of the uh, the nasty bits, like the bleaching or whatever. And then I can churn it back, force everything back in, and uh, show the aggregates and whatnot. So hopefully it's not going to be too too bad a match once it dries out. It'll go a bit lighter than it is now. There we go, that is all that set. Doesn't look too bad, it, I mean it does look like new mortar, but it's always going to. But now I feel confident enough to get that knocked out now. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully in the next one, they're going to be coming out, which will be fantastic. Uh, there hasn't been a sponsorship bit in this video, as you can tell. Um, but there will be to come because it's going to be very helpful. But thank you if you voted for the, in that poll. That was really useful. Um, and it's as this channel's getting bigger, which it's over 50,000 subscribers now. I don't really have the mind to process that, but um, like that's it's a big deal, right? And yeah, it's awesome. So thank you very much for subscribing. Um, but with that, I think comes a huge variety of opinions. So I'm just trying to feel my way into a happy middle if i can um, i'd like to make more videos the sponsorship does help that and also the memberships they help that as well thank you very much for being a member um yeah so that's that thank you very much and ciao for now thank you to the lovely person from michigan that sent these for ziggy